In the previous lecture on the price elasticity of demand, we talked about how the price elasticity of demand refers to the responsiveness of the quantity demanded of a particular good or service relative to its change in price. Now what we didn't talk about in that lecture is how the price elasticity of demand is determined. So in this lecture we will talk about how what the determinants of the price elasticity of demand are. So there are a number of things that help determine the price elasticity of demand. So firstly we will look at the type of item it relates to. And naturally this means whether the item is a luxury or whether the item is a necessity for survival. So for an elastic demand curve the item is a luxury and for an inelastic demand curve the item must be a necessity. And what necessities are, are basically foods, accommodation, medical attention and uh, other things necessary for survival. And what a luxury is, is say something like holidays, uh, cars, uh, luxury designer items and, and all that, that, that aren't necessary for survival. So if, if the luxurious item has a very elastic demand curve, we can see that consumers are willing to wait when the price drops to purchase the item. So let's say take a designer shirt for example. If the price is $100 to start off with, the corresponding quantity demanded would be at Q1. If, however, this price drops to $90, we see that there's a 10% off sale, the quantity demanded would drastically increase to point Q2. However, if we have a luxury item, a necessity item, for example, say medical attention, if you get um, an allergic reaction and you need to see the doctor and get antibiotics, this would see that the graph, the uh, the demand graph for a necessity such as antibiotics or medical attention would be highly inelastic. So this means if the price of a medical item expense were to be say $100 and for some reason this price had increased threefold to $300 for that day and you needed to go and see that medical attention, the original quantity demanded for patients would be at Q1. However, because patients need this medical item to survive, the change in quantity here would not be as large as the change in price. So you can see the first determinant of the price elasticity of demand is what the type of item is. So whether the item is a necessity or whether the item is a luxury. Now let's move on to the second concept of price elasticity of demand. Okay, the second determinant of the price elasticity of demand is whether the, subs the product has substitutability. So this relates to the concept of market power. So if the, if the product is something that has a low substitutability, so that means the producer of that product has high market power, then the demand curve of that product is fairly inelastic. So let's say we have a record artist, and someone such as Bon Jovi, and they have, they can only produce their music because of patents they placed on their music. So the, the supply of their music is determined by how much they are willing to sell. And this doesn't change. This is a perfectly inelastic good. And if people believe, if they sell it at, say, $30 per CD, and if people believe that they are worth $30, and they would have to pay $30. There would be no negotiation in the market power. Similarly, if they were to increase their price to $60, and they do have loyal fans, then these loyal fans are willing to pay that same amount. 
at 60 dogs so this is an a substitute with no a, a product with no substitutes however if we look at say uh, candy bars or chocolate bars they have high substitutability and this means they are in a very competitive market so let's take the the example of a Mars or a Snickers bar let's assume for the minute that they are perfect substitutes so perfect substitutes and this means that neither Mars nor Snickers have attempted to advertise their product or have gained brand awareness so what we can see here is that there is a perfectly elastic demand curve for Mars and Snickers so assume that they charge two dollars fifty per bar if for whatever reason Mars decides to increase their price to three dollars a bar then they would have no demand for their bars and this is me this is because Snickers is a perfect substitute and by this I mean if people were to eat Snickers they would derive the same amount of satisfaction if they were to were to consume Mars bars and so if the price of the Mars bars were to increase then people would no longer buy the Mars bars because they can buy for a cheaper price they can buy the Snickers bar for a cheaper price at two dollars fifty so this is the concept of substitutability whether there are substitutes that exist in the marketplace which would allow you to derive the same amount of pleasure from consuming one good over another now the third concept of uh, the determinants of demand is the is our time constraint so our time period that we are allowed to buy this good or service so let's assume that we have absolutely no time we are we we need bread to host a party and we don't have any bread in the in, in the fridge at the moment or in the pantry and so we go to the supermarket and we want to buy bread and we only have 20 minutes to buy this and so the the, the safe way which is a 10 minute drive from from your house is the only and the closest supermarket uh, available at that time and what they do is they charge bread at a at an absurd price so they charge bread say at ten dollars per loaf so this is at ten dollars ten dollars a loaf and we know that everywhere else charges say five dollars but since we have no time to move to that place we have a very inelastic demand curve because we cannot scour the market for cheaper prices so we must take this ten dollars because of our time constraints similarly if we were to look at a period of time where we have uh, a lot of a lot of time as compared to no time at all we can see that if Safeway increases their um, their price of bread to from five dollars to ten dollars people could easily drive another ten minutes to to the coals nearby and purchase the bread for five dollars and this means that uh, because we have time because we can look at the market and great and look at the greater share of the market we can determine where the low cost products lie however if we have no time then the demand curve of that product is inelastic because we have no choice and in fact the product that Safeway offers is in is in fact a monopoly because that is the only product in the market at that point in time that is viable to us now another example where uh, the the cost of the price elasticity of demand is fairly inelastic is where uh, we have different levels of income so whether the product 
has a relative importance to our income. And what this means is that if the product had increased from 50 cents, 50 cents to say a dollar and we make say a hundred thousand dollars a year and we don't have much uh, and we don't we don't have much other financial commitments to attend to we would not think twice about that buying that same product because this represents a small proportion of our income. However, if we were to buy a large purchase, say a car, for example, and if that the cost of the car costs fifty thousand dollars, and our income costs a hundred thousand, our income is a hundred thousand dollars per year, we will experience a relatively elastic demand curve. So initially, if the price of the car costs fifty thousand dollars, the quantity demanded would only be at Q1. However, if this price of the car were to drop to forty thousand dollars, we are saving, in fact, twenty percent, and so the quantity demanded of that particular car would be at Q2. See, this is only a twenty percent decrease. In price and this if we were to decrease say a Freddy frog from a dollar to 50 cents would be in fact a 100% a 50 200% decrease from one dollar to 50 cents however we can see that because the Freddy frog or the chocolate bar represents only a small proportion of our income the demand will stay relative to th relatively the same at Q1 however since uh, this purchase of a car which represents 40 or 50 percent of our $100,000 income if this were to decrease by 20 percent the quantity demanded will change significantly okay and lastly we have the final determinant of the price elasticity of demand and that relates to complementary goods so let's redraw these graphs for a minute So the final determinant is complementary goods. And what this suggests that the demand for cheap complementary items, for example, if we want to purchase a swimming pool, and you have spent twenty thousand dollars installing the swimming pool and you needed to add water into the swimming pool then the demand for the water would be relatively inelastic so a curve which has a relatively inelastic demand curve and what this suggests is that if the price of water were to be say at initially five dollars a litre to install the quantity demanded of that water for swimming pools would be at Q1. However, if this price were to increase double to $10 a litre, the quantity demanded would not change as much, proportionately as much as the change in price. So this is because the swimming pool cost $20,000. And because you've already spent that $20,000, you want to put water into the pool. And this represents a minor cost. And because you have installed the pool, you want to gain a benefit from using the pool. There is no point in buying the pool and letting it stay idle for, for however long, many, many months or days or weeks, for the price of the water to drop from $10 a litre to $5 a litre. So you just buy it immediately and you want to use up the benefit of the of the pool. And so we have the five different determinants of the price elasticity of demand. So let's recap the five different determinants. 
Firstly, you have the type of item. You have the type of item. So whether it is a luxury or a necessity. Secondly, you have the substitutability of an item, whether you can derive the same material pleasure from purchasing another substitute in the market or not. Thirdly, you have the time period you will work with. So if you have a short time period, you have a very inelastic demand curve because you have no choice to look at other products in the market because of time constraints. Or if you have a lot of time to um, research the market, then you have a very elastic demand curve. Thirdly, you have the cost or relative importance of the object, of the good or service. And this relates to the percentage of the income the good or service takes by purchasing it. And lastly, you have minor complementary items. An example we worked through with the idea of a swimming pool. And so you have it, the five different determinants of the price elasticity of demand.